want to start with the uh, civilian space mission. We talked with Jared Isaacman yesterday, uh, the CEO who will be leading that all civilian mis mission. And I'm curious whether you think that that is something that NASA should be regulating when it involves civilians going into space, even with a private company. So I, I don't think so. NASA is an agency that does exploration, discovery. Of course, we do human space flight. But when it comes to human space flight uh, by the private sector, I think there are other agencies that are, that are in fact, more um, capable of doing regulation uh, than NASA. NASA is about science and discovery. Uh, we are not uh, at NASA, and I say we. Of course, I'm not at NASA as of the last two weeks, but, but NASA is not a, not a regulator. And I think we should be careful to not get NASA mixed up in, in that kind of activity. Curious what you've seen so far, what your thoughts are on what you've seen so far from the Biden administration regarding um, space exploration, uh, the White House saying that the president does support a, a mission to the moon. You know, I knew that, know that you were uh, supportive of, of, of getting all the way to Mars. Um, uh, do you think the Biden team is, is missing something? Here? No, I think I think they are doing the right thing. Um, I am actually quite pleased and excited about the, the Biden administration coming out and saying that they support the Artemis program and fully embracing the idea that it's time to land the first woman on the surface of the moon. Uh, that's a that's a, that's an idea whose time has come. There have only been 12 people that walked on the moon. Uh, they were all white men. And now at NASA, there is a very diverse, highly qualified astronaut corps that, it, that includes women, and, and it represents all of America. And I would just say I'm very proud of the Biden administration for, uh, for embracing the Artemis program. A lot of people might not realize Artemis, in Greek mythology, is the twin sister of Apollo, and she was the goddess of the moon. So we think about here we are 50 years after the Apollo program. We're going back to the moon, and of course, this time we're going with all of America, and we're doing it with a purpose, and that is to get to Mars. The moon is the proving ground. It's how we learn how to live and work on another world for long periods of time, and then we take all that knowledge to Mars. And so the fact that we went from one administration to the next and we kept that continuity moving forward, I, I just really think that's great, and I think you know that's the kind of unity that America can respond to and be enthusiastic about. Now, every time I look at the night sky, I see more satellites in space. And I wonder, with all of this new exploration, all of these uh, new satellites um, in our orbit, are you at all concerned about the amount of debris? Like, in some uh, future yeah. life, could we trap ourselves on Earth, given how much is now up there? Absolutely. We are seeing constellations being launched into space now for a basically low Earth orbit, for low latency, high throughput communications, which is absolutely great because it's going to transform how we do communications. It's going to connect the world. That other half of the world that is not connected is now going to be connected. Um, all that is wonderful for humanity. The challenge is you know, we have we have seen orbital debris uh, continue to grow, and and of course, if we damage low Earth orbit, um, it, it we can't get it back. It's going to be damaged forever. So it has to be preserved. We need to be responsible. I will tell you the companies that I know that are doing these activities, they are focused on responsibility. But but there absolutely has to be a government response that says here are the rules by which everybody will operate. We need better space situational awareness. We need space traffic management. We need space debris remediation capabilities. How do we get the debris out of space? And we need everybody to be very responsible when it comes to space debris mitigation. Uh, if we do all of those things, which right now we're not where we need to be, but if we do all of those things, uh, space will be preserved for a long time and humanity will be made much better off. So just 30 seconds left, Jim. Uh, now with ACORN, where do you think they should be placing their bets in this sector? Quickly. Yeah, so we, we see um, the space environment is now more investable than ever before. It used to be the place for billionaires. 
Then venture capitalists got involved in it, and now it's moving into private equity. What does that mean? That means that there are stable cash flows, there are stable revenues. Space is now investable at the private equity level, and of course, we're seeing a lot of companies go public. So I really think this is a great time to be in, to be investing in, in commercial space.